There are numerous gaps in the literature that need to be addressed. One such gap is the lack of evidence regarding load selection. This is something that I've already mentioned as well. Why are you choosing a 16 kilo kettlebell as a golden standard for any kettlebell research? You have to go according to the principles of coaching and adaptation. So the first thing is individualize it. And then the second thing is specificity. And the third thing is progressive overload. So if you have folks who are pretty well trained with the kettlebell, the 16 kilo, it's not that it's bad, but it doesn't provide that much of a trigger or that much of a stimuli or stimulus to engage in anything that is worthwhile, especially when you compare it with weightlifting. So he goes on to say a novel approach must be developed and tested. Yeah, it is what it is. And so this is the review that I want to share with you guys. I think it is so interesting. So let's go through this. He says a kettlebell is a steel ball with a horseshoe shaped handle. They have been used as an exercise tool in Russia since the 1700s and have seen somewhat of resurgence in the United States and other Western countries in the last 10 years. Last 10 years, you know, this is, that's like nothing. <laughs> that's like nothing. This resurgence has been at least in part due to the popularity of group fitness classes and high intensity interval training methodology. Training with kettlebells is in some ways preferable to conventional resistance training. Kettlebell exercises are simpler. And, and actually, that's, I have to actually, I have to disagree. Because he says kettlebell exercises are simpler and faster to learn than many resistance training techniques and can be instantly switched between bilateral and unilateral access. That's true. It can be switched with the bilateral and unilateral stuff. But I don't think it's as simple and as fast to learn, especially when you talk about the Russian style. Purported benefits of kettlebell training include the following, improved core stability, so he goes all these, these the good stuff that, that kettlebells can provide. However, despite its long and stored history, there is little clinical evidence to support the claimed benefits kettlebell training provides. Many gaps in the literature exist, and what evidence we do have is less than 10 years old. What follows is a brief assessment, blah, 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 which is very, it, it is a very interesting um study so let's go into it i have to skim through it and show you all the recent research that he was checking out biomechanically speaking the kettlebell swing is a highly functional exercise involving multiple joints and a large and large muscle groups since the swing actually it's not multiple joints if you do the swing correctly the only thing that happens is if we can count it your knees are getting soft that's, but it's not actually, your knees are not bending. So the, the knee joint is not actively working. The only thing that is working is your hip. That's why it's more of a hinge movement. So here he says, um, here he got the numbers. Recent research on kettlebell training has shown that it causes positive changes in cardiovascular health, but it's equal equivocal regarding body composition. Farah et al. show that kettlebell training can elicit heart rate responses averaging 86% of age predicted max. This falls within the American College of Sports Medicine recommended intensity to improve cardiovascular health. Awesome. So we have at least that research where we can say kettlebell training can improve your heart's condition. And they all followed a kettlebell protocol established by Pavel and here you see, they, all subjects use 16 kilo, regardless of body mass, which I think is sometimes why. Why not use a different, um, different kettlebell weights? And then they talk about the American swing. Okarinen found that lumbar angles are highest in the overhead position, which may contribute to lower back pain. On the other hand, Mikhail et al. found that the Russian swing hand normal, uh, Russian swing hand, what? found that the Russian swing hand had normal lumbar angles and due to its unique loading properties may restore back function in some individuals. A minimum size kettlebell would be available following since heavier kettlebells increase lumbar stress and increase risk of injury, of course. But if you're stronger and you have better technique, then you probably need a heavier kettlebell. 
Thomas et al. show similar benefits to kettlebell training. The goal of the Thomas et al. study was to compare the cardiovascular stress of continuous kettlebell training to brisk treadmill walking. And actually, in that recent video where I was talking about the kettlebell research, I said that they compared the treadmill. 10 minutes of treadmill burns more calories than 10 minutes of kettlebell training. And I agreed in that recent video. Then I went through it again and I read that they were doing in the 10 minute kettlebell training st study. Of course, they used only the 16 kilo, which is one flaw. But the second flaw that I discovered is they were doing a Tabata interval system. 35 seconds of work followed by 20 seconds of rest. And they did it for 10 minutes. So they did multiple sets. So I'm losing all my lights. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Man, I've been off so long. So now I forgot to tune the lights, but that's good. If, if, if the, the, the battery is off, then I can recharge it 100%. So I'm um, sorry, guys, if, if the quality is dropping a little bit. So what I said was in that if you do a interval method with kettlebells for 10 minutes, then you actually cannot compare it as good with 10 minutes of treadmill running because if you do 10 minutes of treadmill running you run for 10 minutes continuously non-stop so a better comparison would be to have somebody who is advanced in kettlebell training who knows his or her stuff has great technique uses a weight that challenges the person and still is able to do a 10 minute set so for example why not do a 10 minute set of snatches with if i would be the one who had to conduct it i would choose a 20 kilo kettlebell or maybe a 24 if i'm really really prepared 20 kilo kettlebells 10 minutes of snatches five minutes links five five minutes left five minutes right and then we compare the cardiovascular or the calorie output with the treadmill running and then i would say probably 10 minutes of snatches will burn more calories than 10 minutes of treadmill running. I would say so. And it's easier on the joints. So, subjects complete the three sets of kettlebell swings and sumo deadlifts at a cadence of 80 hertz. Each set lasted 10 minutes, followed by a three-minute rest period. A control group completed a treadmill protocol of similar duration with a similar rest period. Results from the study indicate that continuous kettlebell exercises at a moderate pace can produce similar rates of oxygen consumption and slightly higher heart rates as brisk treadmill walk. Well, it's brisk treadmill walk and it's not running. The kettlebells for this test were selected based on gender. Males used a 16, here we have it again. Females used a 12 kilo. This represents an improvement in methodology from Father Donald, but only a slight one. A more individualized approach to selecting resistance would have been ideal. But, but they don't do it. And I don't understand why they don't do it. In addition to its cardiovascular benefits, kettlebell training has been shown to increase muscular strength and power. Muscular power is defined as the maximum amount of work that can be accomplished in minimal time. In other words, power is load versus speed. Traditional resistance training methods for power development focus on increasing load and include the following. Deadlift, power clean, snatch. While extremely effective, these te techniques are te technically difficult to master requiring months of formal instruction, which I 100% agree. Furthermore, when performed incorrectly, they have a higher injury rate than other resistance training techniques. That's the reason why you don't see it as often. You need a coach who really knows the stuff, who can really show you that stuff. On the other hand, kettlebell techniques are relatively simple to learn and utilize far lighter loads. Due to the lighter loads, it seems counterintuitive to kettlebells would have any positive effect on muscular strength and power. However, they utilize the same musculature as the traditional power lifts and require a much greater speed of contraction. And that's interesting. It is this higher velocity work rate that most likely leads to improvements in muscular power. In addition to specific exercises, specific exercise intensities are required to trigger power adaptations. According to the National Strength and Conditioning Association, the optimal intensity prescription for power development is blah, 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 blah. This prescription cannot be applied to kettlebell training due to, due to its ballistic nature. Furthermore, due to the rapid eccentric phase of the kettlebell swing, testing its one repetition max it has a higher risk of injury, of course, than traditional power lifts. So it's interesting. It's because we work at a higher rate. And this probably goes with that one study that I always, I think it was McGill, McGill and I think Brad Schoenfeld mentioned this as well, that 
as long as the muscle experiences this mechanical load and stress where adaptations where it's forced to adapt it doesn't matter if it is very heavy or lighter so that's one of the reasons why kettlebell training is effective in building muscle as well and so um, he goes with the Otto et al study that I want to show you if it's here Lake, Lake et al is also an interesting study in 2012 Lake et al put 21 adult males to suit uh, limbs See, they misspelled his name. <laughs> they misspelled his name. That's how popular kettlebell training is, man. This is crazy. Tatsulin's protocol, outlined above, or jump squat protocol of similar volume for six weeks. Subject's muscular power was measured via half squat and vertical jump testing. Results indicate that kettlebell training is just as effective as jump squat protocols at improving lower body power. That actually goes to show with another study that I've read about where it said that there were some adaptations but not the same um there were some adaptations in the jump squat in the vertical leap but not the same as with traditional strength training methods like the squat or or a heavy leg press so these are uh, kind of pitched against each other Kettlebell loads for the study were, again, 16 and 12 for subject or below 70 kilo, respectively. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. It's like, oh, 16 for a seven, 16 kilo is, is, is the golden standard. And then you see what the Russians do. They tell you, oh, no, you have to, if you want to get master of sport, you have to work with two, 32 kilogram kettlebells. That's 64 kilos. Oh, you're only 64 kilos heavy. Who cares what your body weight is? You can do a few fewer reps, but you still have to choose the same weight. This is crazy. Isn't this crazy? And uh, we have another app break coming up, guys. Same. Just know this, I sponsored today's video of Libestark. In the back you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Libestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training.